retail stock traders, and as beginning entrepreneurs. So it used to be that you worked for one company your entire life, not that long ago, maybe like 75 years ago, um, like in the 50s, uh, 40s, you know, even 60s, of the 1900s. You just worked for one company and you, you know, you retired with a great pension. You know, you got the you got the gold watch after 40 years of service or whatever it was. You know, you had uh, 15, 20 years of retirement, you know, to enjoy uh, with, uh, you know, good uh, good pension. And that was it. And then we entered the free agent economy where every person was for themselves. Every company was for themselves. There was a lack of loyalty on both sides. The companies were not loyal to the employees, so the employees were not loyal to the companies. So now it's kind of like catch as cash can. You make as much money as you can. But you're still working for the man. You're still working for the boss. So a few years ago, maybe 5, 10, 15 years ago, and I think this was triggered by both the Internet and the smartphone, and you know now by 5G and other things, that... We entered like a gig economy, a, free, a freelancer. So you could make a living, you know, not a great one, but, you know, respectable, decent, you know, driving for Uber or driving for DoorDash or working on Fiverr or working on Upwork, being a graphic designer. So millions and millions of people are in the freelancer, the gig economy now. And uh, they're making their, uh, you know, livings one website at a time or one web designer at a time. So... It's increasingly moving further and further and further from working for the man to working for yourself. So, you know, it started out where you worked for one company your entire life. You're just like kind of like, you know, Henry Ford, you know, kind of started it with the factory. It's kind of like the factory kind of owned you. I mean, for those 40 hours, you know, it's just like you didn't really have much autonomy. You just stood in a factory and produced widgets or in Henry Ford's case. I mean, obviously, you know, they were great cars because people could afford them and they took off. Um, but, you know, you your time was not your own. You punched the time clock. That's that's kind of the embodiment of it. To, you know, then you worked for one company, you still put punched the time clock and they still told you what to do. Very hierarchical. To, you kind of decided which companies you wanted to work for. You know, people became like uh, serial employees. <clears throat> Excuse me. They would work, I just ate uh, and uh, I ate a little bit too fast, so I apologize. But anyway, um, you worked for one company, uh, you know, for maybe like two years just to get experience, and then you worked for another company. So it was kind of like job hopping, you know, instead of going for one company for 50 years, you kind of went to get a few years of experience and then go someplace else where you get some more experience. So, and then people started going into the gig economy. So what's next after the gig economy? The next after the gig economy, it is fueled by the pandemic, is that people... People always want to be entrep- entrepreneurs, but being an entrepreneur is tough. You know, it's like for every Kim Kardashian, there's a thousand people that, you know, don't have the skills or the resources to, you know, be extremely viable, you know, at least to that degree as an entrepreneur. So a stepping stone with the pandemic, people are losing their jobs. You know, people are losing their regular jobs. A lot of places have closed. I mean, a lot of restaurants are closed or at minimum capacity or a lot of other businesses have closed. So a lot of jobs have been lost. I mean, the jobs are coming back, but the, the unemployment is much higher than it was before the pandemic started. So what are all these people doing? Well, they're collecting their, you know, stimulus and whatever savings they have. And a lot of them are going into Robin Hood in the stock market. And they're getting up together, you know, towards uh, Wall Street bets and other things. And they're taking down the hedge funds. I mean, taking down the hedge funds is probably a little bit too strong a word because they they took them down for a while and then, you know, GameStop and some of the other ones, you know, really crashed. So I'm not sure how many of the retail traders made money and how much lost money. I mean, Robin Hood's been in the news a lot because of the gamification of their platform and whether it's too dangerous for some people. I mean, anything in life, you have to have some trial and error. You know, if you don't make any mistakes in life, you're not going to learn. I mean, when I first started being an entrepreneur... I was lousy, and it took a, a large number of years before I even felt like I was decent at it. Because the more difficult thing you're trying to do, you know, the more experience you need. So now retail investors are kind of like becoming mini entrepreneurs. You know, it's like their their stock investments are their business. You know, they wake up early and they 
devour the research and they they talk to their friends on the chat line on the uh, social media and they do whatever else they do uh, you know to work their retail investing and that, that's a business so retail you know entrepreneurs I mean uh, retail investors are becoming like entrepreneurs it's, it's kind of like being a mini entrepreneur because it's kind of like you have to you know, manage cash flow, you have to manage research, you have to manage communications, uh, you have to manage, you know, sometimes even HR if you have people to help you do your research. So it's, it's kind of like a mini, uh, a mini empire, a, a mini business uh, just on your Robin Hood.